So in this video, we're going to be learning about Go. So Go is a really interesting language because it's designed to be as easy to use as Python, but it's also designed to be as fast as C. So this is the Go Hello World program. And if we type go run code.go, it prints out hello world. For every program in Go is part of a package, and for your program to be executable, you need a main package and a main function. The function print line isn't built into Go, so it's built into the fumped package. So to import another package, we use the import keyword and the name of the package. Go isn't object oriented, so there's no objects, no classes, there's no encapsulation, so no private or public keywords. So the way we control the visibility of methods in a Go library or a Go package is by using capital letters. So if we use a capital letter in a function, that exports the function so that anyone who imports your package can call that function. If print line didn't have a capital letter, it could only be called from within the fumped package. So you'll also have noticed that this is how we create a function in Go. We use the func keyword, the name of the function, and two curly brackets, just like in C. So to create a function in Go, we use the func keyword, we give the function a name, and now we're going to get our function to do something. So our function is going to take two parameters. It's going to take a and b, and they're both going to be integers. And we're going to return a plus b. But we haven't told Go what our function returns, so after the function's name, we say we want to return an int. So if we were to run this now, we get the result. Go also has variables, so we can create a variable using the var keyword, give it a name and a type, and set it equal to a value, like that. We can create a variable and not initialize it. We can create another variable and give it no type at all. And Go will figure out the type for us so it knows because we've said it's equal to 20 that the variable called C is an int. If you're within a function, you can also use another syntax for creating a variable, the shorthand syntax, which is a colon equals, and you can set it equal to a value. So in this case, D is gonna be an integer and it's gonna be equal to 30. The shorthand syntax comes in handy when we start to work with arrays. So we can create an array using the shorthand syntax, and we use two square brackets. We give the array a size, which in this case is five. We give it a type, so the elements in the array are going to be integers. And we finally finish off the declaration with two curly brackets. And if we wanted to, we could fill the array with values in those curly brackets. Arrays in Go are fixed size. So this array will never be longer than five elements. So a much more useful feature in Go is slices. So slices are like dynamic arrays. So to create a slice instead of an array, all we do is we take out the size when we create the array. So this is a slice and this is an array and the slice can be resized dynamically. If we wanted to increase the size of our slice, we could use the append function. We pass our slice to the function and we pass the value we wanna pass on to our slice. Or we could pass multiple values like this and append will return a new slice. So we want to overwrite the old slice with a new one. And in Go, if you declare a variable and don't use it, that is an error. So if we comment these out, we'll get rid of those errors. And we run that, and here is our slice with three elements in it. So Go doesn't have objects, but it does have structs. So I can create a struct, and I'm going to call it shape, and it's going to be a struct. Just like in C, a struct is a group of fields. So these are the characteristics of a shape. And I create a new shape like this. And in these curly brackets, I pass values to the fields in the struct. And this is an instance of our shape struct. In Go, even though we don't have objects, we can attach methods to our structs. So I'm gonna create a method and attach it to a struct. So it's gonna be called rotate, and this is our rotate function. We're also gonna create another field in our struct, which is the current rotation of our shape, and it's gonna start at zero. So when we call rotate, what we're gonna do is we're going to rotate the shape by 90 degrees. Before the name of the function, we pass our struct. We're gonna call it S, and it's gonna be a shape. So what we do is we just say s.rotation plus equals 90. And if I was to say s.rotate and print out our struct, the rotation should be 90. But you can see when we print out our struct, the rotation is still zero. And the reason for that is because what we're doing here is passing a copy of our struct to the rotate function. But that rotate function is modifying a copy. It's not modifying the original. So what we do is we pass a pointer to our struct because Go has pointers. So now s is a pointer to our struct which means when we call s.rotate, we can modify s. So if I run that, now you can see our struct got modified. Go also has loops and if statements. So if we say if one equals one, print correct. And as you can see, we don't surround them in round brackets like we do in other languages. This is a valid if statement in Go. For looping, we can create a for loop. So we can say for i equals zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus, like that. 
Go doesn't have any other loop other than a for loop. Go doesn't have while loops or for each loops or anything like that. So to mimic a while loop, what I can do is say while some condition is true and we'll say v equals zero and while v is less than 10, v plus plus like that. That's how we mimic a while loop in Go. And you can see if we run that, we get correct, we get all our numbers printed out, we get true printed out a load of times as well, and then we get everything else printed out. So we're running out of time, but finally we're gonna look at concurrency in Go, which is how we do multiple things at the same time in Go. So instead of using threads, Go has what are called Go routines, which are like really, really cheap threads. So to create a Go routine is actually really simple. So to create a Go routine, all we do is we use the Go keyword and we give it a function to run. So in this case, it's going to be add and we're going to add two numbers together. And if I run this, nothing will happen because what we're trying to do is return the values A and B, which isn't the way you're supposed to do it in Go because Go has what are called channels. So we'll really quickly look at that. We'll create a channel, which is a type in Go. So we're creating a channel called C and it's going to take integers. And instead of returning a value, we're going to send the value back down the channel. So to send a value down the channel, which is kind of like how we return values from a Go routine, we use the channel's name, we use the backwards arrow, and then we give it the value we want to send down the channel. So in this case, it's A plus B. So when we run our add function now, we have to pass a channel, which we've called C. And I'm gonna say C is equal to a channel. So to create a channel, we use the make keyword, and we create a channel of integers. And we're gonna create a variable called total, and it's going to receive data from the channel. So we use the backwards arrow again to receive data from the channel. It's gonna receive the value from C and it's going to print it out. And when we're done with our channel, we're just gonna say close to close our channel. So if we run that, you can see we get the result we were looking for and it was calculated in the background of our program. It just didn't look like it because we're only returning one value. So in later videos, we're gonna go into concurrency and go a lot more than we did in this video. But hopefully you learned a lot about Go in this video. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Also, don't forget to check out the newhowcode.org. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.